Hi there. Nice to be here with you. How are you, man? Thank you. Doing well. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you for having me. Friends, this is Astab Dezindra. He is the, how do you call it, president or director of Build and Restore International? President. President of Build and Restore International. So I wanted you to see this interview because this is a very, very nice story. Astab, what is Build and Restore? You know, our desire as Build and Restore is to organize volunteers in service to coordinate different service projects, to get people excited about giving back to their community. Okay, so you organize mission trips. So what type of mission trips are, they, are, are, are these like? So our mission projects involve a skill learning type of projects where you come together as a group and you're learning to paint, you're learning to install flooring, you're learning to change out windows, you're learning to re-roof a house. A um, variety of skills that uh, are useful that you can use throughout your life you get to learn them right there on the mission project. Nice. So basically, the main thing that you do is uh, is building related. Yes, that's Great. the main focus: is to come in and renovate a church, renovate a school, uh, maybe a camp or a lifestyle center, something that is giving back to the community, something that's community centered. The other aspect of the ministry is that we provide training opportunity for people to practice public speaking, evangelism. Nice. We go together, we have a presentation that's ready to go, and we practice. And then everyone that wants to will go up front on stage and present a uh, evangelistic series. Or cool. if they're not ready for that just yet, maybe they can do a health nugget in the beginning. Others come with their musical talents and they sing. And then we have another opportunity to work with the children. A vacation Bible School, oh, as we cool. travel to different locations, we allow people the opportunity to say, well, I want to enrich the lives of the children. Okay, and, and this is these all these things that you're talking are are they different mission trips or all of this happens with just one mission trip? Each mission trip has a building component, evangelism, medical, and a children's program. Wow, awesome. So it's a lot happening. So how many people do you need to run a, a, a mission trip like this? How many volunteers? You know, it depends on the scale of the project, depends how far we're having to go. If it's something more local, we can uh, do a project with 15, 20 people. Mm -hmm. If we're going somewhere further, sometimes we need 35 people to, to really make the, the project successful. But we've also had projects where we only went with eight people. Mm. And the opportunity there is a little bit different because now we don't have the hands that we need to do this building, but we have come to do something that will be impactful in the community, so what do we do? We look for the local people around the area that have nothing to do and we invite them to go with us. Awesome, awesome. And to be a part of this project. So we've actually taken people off the street that were either addicted to alcohol or drugs or had you know unemployment on their, um, and we just, we work together with them, we train them, we show them. And uh, in South Africa, when we were building a church, the men that came and worked together with us uh, for that three and a half month project to learn mm -hmm. how to lay block, they learned how to do the roof, mm -hmm. they learned all these valuable skills that now they could go back to their community and say, well, now I'm no longer just a guy on the side of the road that's drunk, now I have a skill that I can provide. Wow. So I'm convicted like, well, we need to do more. As we're working together, as we're feeding them, we're giving them a small payment for their time for you know being there with us mixing the concrete carrying the block nice. he starts to study the bible with the head elder <laughs> as he's studying the bible with the head elder the evangelism program is going on he's coming to the seminars he's listening he's standing in the back he hasn't taken a seat yet but he's listening we finished the building project the church is dedicated we go back home a couple of uh Weeks go by, a couple of months go by, I get a message. Hey, do you remember this guy? He's getting baptized today. No way. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. So awesome. Beautiful. So you mentioned South Africa. How many countries do you guys have been doing this, this project? You know, I never imagined that I would be going to Myanmar, Cambodia, <laughs> Thailand, South America, Central America. It's been just an incredible journey to see how God has opened the door to go and help in different countries and wow. uh, just contribute to, to the need. So how many, how many of these uh, mission projects do you do every year? So this year we've been able to accomplish 22 mission projects. 22 mission projects. So I guess you need a lot of volunteers. We do. We do. Okay, so you guys are listening. 
So if you want to go and volunteer, you want to do impact to life and really do something for a community somewhere around the world, you just need to contact Austub. You know, the links are going to be in the description below. But you have to be aware of something. These are not, you don't like to call them mission trips. How do you want, how do you like to call them? Mission projects. Mission projects. And why is that? Because our projects are ongoing. We like to stay in touch with the areas that we're helping and also because we're really going for a different purpose and, and reason. We're not going to go sightseeing, we're not going to eat out at different restaurants, we're not going to jump on a bus and go touring around the, the country. We're really going to help impact the lives of the people as we build, as we do health evangelism, as yeah. we do um, you know, programs for the community that will help change their life. Uh, it's more meaningful. It's not just, you know, hey, let's go on a tour. Mm. Uh, we do get to see some of the beautiful sights of those different countries as we travel through and, and stop and look. But the main focus is still the main focus, to help, to contribute, to, to rebuild and restore the lives of the people there. Amen. So if you're not into volunteerism, <laughs> but you really want to go and volunteer to a project, impact lives, serve with your skills for others so they can learn about Jesus, then you have to contact this. But now let's change the topic. Let's go to the most important thing that I want them to hear. How did you get started, Asta? Because now you have, as you said, 22 mission trips, sorry, mission projects, you know, around the world. Uh, you do all these evangelism, health expos, and I guess you need materials, et cetera. It was like, I, I guess you started having a big fund or a big sponsor with everything. You know, everything that we do in life that's meaningful uh, has a humble beginning. And the humble beginning for us was the time of humbling ourselves before the Lord, praying and just searching out, not just our own hearts, but searching out the calling that God would have for us. You know, Amen. what is the, the specific thing that He's going to put in my heart to, to do? Um, something that would be fulfilling, something that would be meaningful, something that would have a, a sincere purpose. We found that calling and purpose in Isaiah 58, 12. Mm -hmm. To go forth and build the waste places to restore the paths to dwell in. So the names build and restore come right out from Isaiah 58, 12. Mm, nice. Now, before having build and restore, you were working on a water company, right? What were you doing there? What was your position? My responsibilities was in assets and record management, uh, some engineering design work. Mm -hmm. and uh, project management out in the field as we would construct new water towers, drill new wells, and uh, put in new infrastructure to provide water for new development. Okay, so in what happened, or how did you discover it, or how did God told you that suddenly you needed to leave that and start like this, this thing? Yeah, so for me there was this transition of really praying and searching out the Word of God, to know what the Word of God wants me to know and what I need to do. I became more intentional to study and read my Bible more frequently, to have personal devotions every single day, to really look at the Bible as if my life depended on this, mm. as if my whole entire life depended on the Word of God to know the next step I am to take. Moses has this prayer in Exodus chapter 33 where he says, Lord, if you do not go with me, don't let me move another step from this place. Mm. And I said, yeah, I, I want that same experience. I want to take every single step with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so that happens as I begin to surround myself with more mission-minded people, as I begin to surround myself with people that are on fire to share their faith, as I begin to go to different activities, events, and see that there's a work that's being done, and unfortunately not too many people are involved in it. And so I began to find myself in circles of people that were doing a church sponsor project somewhere, or they were sending a mission group somewhere, or they were involved in rescuing children in Thailand, or they were in one way or another doing something incredible for the Lord, and I said, wow, who are these people? I want to be just like them. I want to do something like this that's valuable to help others. How did the first mission project start? So what happens when we're excited about something? We take the time to tell everybody and everybody about it. If you have a new girlfriend, you're going to tell everybody on the block that you have a new girlfriend because you're excited about this new opportunity. This was a new baby that had come into town for me, per se, and it was something so exciting that now 
I'm transitioning from just an office worker to being a full-time missionary to now being on the road, living by faith, expecting and knowing that God is going to provide because He says, I provide for you. And now we're living this, this journey of faith as we go from one project to the next. I began to email everybody and everybody that I know. I began to text and send you know, messages to anybody and everybody that I know. I began to contact people and say, look, the Lord has put a burden on my heart to start a ministry called Build and Restore. Can you be a part of it? If not, can you support what we're doing? If not, do you want to go with us and experience it yourself? Maybe your children would want to go with us. Maybe a friend or a relative, maybe your church group. And so I just began to plant seeds in the lives of the people around me in my circle of influence to go and do something more impactful than, awesome. than not. Did you have any funds? I did not. We started from zero. Absolutely no funding. Did you have any building? Like I had... Office building. I had maybe 2% uh, experience in, in structures and, and things that to be built. A lot of it we learned on the go, on the projects. You know, we would find people. Oh, experts, yeah. That know how people. to build. We would take them along with us, and then we would watch and learn exactly what they were doing and repeat that often. And over time, second year, so third nice. year, fourth year, okay, I know how to do this, I know how to do that, I learned how to do this. So cool. Changing a window, I've, I've seen it done, we've done it, I can do it. And so little by little, we started to learn on these projects together. Great, great. So um, how many years have been the, since you started? The ministry really started in the summertime of 2016. 2016. So it's been already... Seven. Several, seven years. There, yeah. there you go. Seven years. And do you guys have an office today? We do not. Uh, the people that are working with us, my associates, they live in different states. Um, my office is in my backpack on my laptop. A lot so of times cool. I'm at the airport and I'm filling out payroll or I'm over traveling, flying mm -hmm. overseas somewhere and I've got Wi-Fi and I'm working and sending emails and letting people know what the next project is. That is so cool because friends, as you have heard, like you don't need an office to start a ministry. No. You don't need a, a funds to start a ministry. You just need to be sure that God is calling you to do something. Right. It's, you know, I, I see a lot in, in many people that they do planning and then they're asking God to bless a plan instead of asking God, hey, what do you plan? <laughs> and I'll just go and hop on with that. So friends, we have to learn to do that. Asta, I want to give you this time. What advice would you give to them? You can talk to them directly there. Yes, um, I want to encourage you today to begin this process of searching your own heart and searching what God's calling is for you. I believe each and every one of us has a calling, specific mission that God wants us to execute. And the best way to do that is to begin on our knees, to be sincere, to be humble, and just pray. And as we pray together, take the time to listen. Take the time to listen to what God is, is wanting to tell you. Whatever convictions come your way, act on them. Don't let them get away from you. If convictions slip away, it's really often the case that it's hard to get them back. And so don't lose that precious time with the Lord as you seek to know more what He wants you to do. And as those convictions come, act on them and God will bless and He'll show you and guide you and direct you every single step of the way. The important thing to understand, and what I've learned from being in, in full-time missions the last seven years, you're not going to get the full picture. Had I seen the full picture, I would probably chicken out. Had I known that I would be organizing so many projects, sending so many missionaries abroad, traveling with people, we've now accomplished over 126 mission projects. Over 5,000 people have gone with us to a variety of different countries. Um, had I known all this in the beginning, I would not have done it. And so the Bible is sure that it tells us that God will only give us as much as we can handle at that very moment. And so moment by moment, trust that the information that you have, the insight that you have, the direction that you have is what you need for that moment. And then as time goes on, God will reveal more and give you the strength and courage to do even more. And so that is my um, desire and my advice for you today as you look to start a ministry. Pray about it, 
you already have the conviction to start a ministry, now pray for guidance and use the principle found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, to ask, to seek, and to knock. It's a threefold principle that's biblical that says that we are to ask for God's guidance, we are to seek for the way He's going to lead us, and we are to knock on the doors that God will open, and then He will, he will do the rest and lead you on that journey. Awesome. Thank you, Asta. Friends, if you want to go, well, if you want to know more about Build and Restore International, links are going to be in the description below. Also, links to sign up if you want to go as a volunteer to this mission project. And friends, well, you know, OCI, we're here to help ministries thrive. So if you want to know more about OCI and how we can help you start a ministry, or if you already have one, to just make it grow and be self-sustainable and just work better for God, all that, links in the description below as well. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks, Asta, for being here. Yes. And see you on the next one.